today I'm going to be reviewing the Nike Zoomfly 3 road running shoes after having done over 50 miles in them. These are the Nike Zoomfly 3s, a running shoe designed, in Nike's words, for runners who want to run long distances fast. I have now done over 50 miles in these shoes, so I feel like I am in a good position to give you a good review, a good update on what I think about these shoes. I'm going to have a look at the shoe itself, and then I'm going to go into the pros and the cons before giving you my conclusion, having put over 50 miles into these shoes. So if you look at the shoe itself, you can see it's got this really thick, really thick foam heel on it. And inside that heel is a carbon plate that runs up the full length of it, which apparently is there to increase uh, responsiveness of the shoe as well as its longevity. The upper on the shoe is made from this really, really light, almost sort of rubberized plasticky material, uh, which feels very, very light. And then on the, the top here, you can see that the, the fit is slightly strange because rather than using the laces to hold you in, it's got this like neoprene sleeve. So it stays on your foot even without the laces being in. Now you may have heard the word carbon plate and be thinking, ooh, is this like the vapor flies, those uh, cheat shoes <laughs> as they've been called? Well, not quite. While this is sort of a sort of a cousin of the, the vapor flies, it doesn't have the same performance claims. It uses a different foam. It's a more dense foam. It's not, it's not as bouncy. So yeah, don't get these thinking they're pretty much exactly the same thing as the vapor flies, the 3% shoes. Nike doesn't make any of those kinds of claims about these shoes. Right, well, let's get into the good points. And the biggest good point is that I love running in these. They are really comfy to wear. There is zero pressure on your feet. You don't really even feel like you've got a shoe on. There's like no real, doesn't feel like it's gripping your foot. It's weird, you've got a sole attached to your foot. It's there, it's comfy to run on, but you just don't feel any pressure from the upper that you can get sometimes when you're wearing shoes. And along with that complete absence of running, there are no hot spots and, as I found so far, absolutely zero blisters. These don't need broken in at all. I could have went out and ran 12 miles in the brand new out of the box and I wouldn't have got any blisters. They just don't have any hot spots and I love that fact about them because all my previous road shoes have given me blisters after a certain mileage. When you're running in them, you have the bouncy, floaty feeling and they feel, ah, oh, they feel amazing to run really, really fast in. And in fact, I have now set my fastest 10K in over two years running in this, these shoes. Sub 45 minute 10K, six miles. Average pace 723 minutes per mile. I have not ran that fast for that long in a very, very long time. And it felt great. I just love how they feel when you're running really, really fast. And now, when you are running, they do seem to promote a forefoot or you know forward foot strike rather than a heel strike. They actually feel weird to heel strike in because the heel has got this such a narrow, narrow point on it. And in warm weather, when we get it, they they are nice and cool to run in. The upper here is really thin, seems really well ventilate it, which does mean it's absolutely 100% not waterproof, but when you do get your feet soaked in these, uh, I find they drain very quickly and they dry very quickly as well. And even when damp, they don't cause you the same problems that shoes made of a different material might. I've had these completely soaked at the start of a 10 mile run and zero issues with them. In theory, these should last longer than a pair of thick than a pair of thick foam soled shoes that don't have a carbon plate because that carbon plate uh, it slows down the crushing and the compression of the foam, so in theory you should get more miles out of these. I'd like to get 500 miles out of them and I will see if that's possible. It's not confirmed, but in theory should get more miles out of these compared to a non-carbon plate thick soled pair of running shoes. That is a mouthful. Now, while these are designed for roads, I have taken them out on trail. I ran 10 miles recently, which was a mixture of about three miles on trail and the rest on road. And they coped actually perfectly fine on the trail. They're not really grippy, so I wouldn't run on anything that's like crazy slippy, but for like forest tracks, that kind of surface, even if there's rocks on it, the thick sole really kind of protects you from that. So they're actually quite nice to run on, on trail, but again, they're not grippy, so would not advise them for anywhere slippy or anywhere that's really muddy. And lastly, one unexpected pro of these shoes is that you can actually run in them without them coming off with the laces entirely undone. I was doing speed work with my running club. We were doing hill sprints in sets of, in sets of seven minutes. 
my laces came on down near the start and I was basically running along, whipping the laces, twirling around, whipping myself around the opposite ankle for five minutes and the shoes stayed on, completely stayed on, there's no problems at all. So that was a bit of an unexpected bonus, it's that uh, neoprene sleeve seems to keep them on really well. Now that leads me on to the cons because my first con is that every time I have gone running in these, the laces have come loose or undone at some point, even when I've double knotted them. Maybe I just need to be more aware of that and tighten them up, so I'll keep an eye on that. Uh, but it is a little bit of a nuisance because I'm definitely having to tie my laces in these more than my other running shoes. Now, while I have said they are super comfy, I did find the upper on them to be a bit... It's a little weird. Because it's so plasticky, it feels like you're almost wearing like a bag on your foot. If you're somebody who likes a nice snug uh, shoe that grips your foot and feels like you're nice and enclosed in it, you're not gonna get that from this because the upper sort of feels like it's, fl you know, it doesn't, it doesn't even feel like it's really contacting with your foot. Even though in practice, it's a really good, even though in practice they're super comfy, there's just something a little bit weird about that upper. Now, while the sole does have these rubber patches on the foam, which should sort of increase the lifespan of the foam, I find that this rubber is softer maybe than what you would get on the soles of other shoes. And actually, if you look here, there, that's a puncture wound from a very small stone. And in fact, if you look even there, that is a tiny stone embedded in the shoe. Now, you might think you brought this trail run, and of course that's gonna happen. I actually picked those up on the road, just like little tiny stones on the road. It seems to be it's quite vulnerable to getting them embedded in the shoe. I'm not sure how that's gonna affect the durability of these long term, but again, it's just something to be aware of if you're somewhere that's, I don't know, infest it with really spiky rock, really spiky tiny rocks. Uh, you go out, you might find these are completely pebble dashed when you get back. So you may or may not consider that a problem. Uh, the odd heel shape on this has me sl feeling slightly cautious when I'm on like really steep descents and I have to use my heels. It's weird, I, think, I don't know if it's just psychological, I haven't got used to it, but there is something weird about by hitting that heel, especially if you were on trail, it just feels slightly odd. So I have found myself running downhill and be slightly slower than I would have otherwise. Potentially it is just psychological and I just need to get over it and go for it. But yeah, the, the, the heel feels a little bit weird if you're, doing, if you're trying to run really fast down a really steep hill. Now this one hasn't been a problem for me, but somebody online said that these are heavy. I didn't find that myself personally when I'm running in them. I thought they felt really light then, but then I'm used to running in trail shoes. But at the very least, they are heavier than the, the more expensive Vaporflies. But how much, I'm not really sure, but I'm just pointing it out because somebody mentioned it to me and I thought I would raise it. Do your own research, you can decide whether they feel heavy or not. But as I said, it's not been a problem for me. And lastly, they're still a premium running shoe. Yes, they're £100 cheaper, but when something's £100 cheaper, you have to ask, how much does it actually cost? I mean, this still is a £100 plus shoe. They're available at the minute, it's kind of for around £110, £150 online, which is still, you know, it's still a premium running shoe when you can pick up cheap ones for like around £40. So if you're, so if you're a casual runner and you're sort of on more of a budget, they might not be a good option for you, but, in conclusion, how do I feel about these shoes? Well, my conclusion is that these are potentially, even with all those cons, these are my favorite running shoes ever. And I really mean that. I absolutely run, absolutely run, I absolutely love running in these. I love running fast in these. I love the fit of them when they're running. I love the fact that I finally have a pair of running shoes that don't do any kind of rubbing hot spots or any kind of blisters over any kind of distance. Yeah. When I go out running in these, these shoes put a big smile on my face. And for me, that's what running is all about. And that is how I will judge these shoes. So despite any of the cons, for me, it comes down to the smiles per miles, and I'm getting a lot of smiles per miles off of these shoes.